I hope all of you doing well. Here in this lecture, we are going to discuss a very very important topic that is a Debye-Huckel theory of strong electrolytes for various competitive examinations of chemistry. Okay, right. According to Debye-Huckel theory, strong electrolytes which exist as ions even in their solid states must be completely ionized in solutions at all concentrations okay so according to debye-huckel theory strong electrolytes exist as ions in their solid states and they must be completely ionized in solutions at all different concentrations of it okay right and now we are going to discuss conductivity of fused salts by just observing an example. Okay, so here we have taken NaCl, sodium chloride crystal, that is the solid crystal of NaCl. We know that NaCl is a strong electrolyte. As we said, strong electrolyte exist as ions even in its solid state okay right so here we can see NaCl in its solid state exist as ions here we can say the red sphere as Na plus and green sphere as Cl minus okay when we see NaCl crystal under x-ray it shows that the crystal is completely formed with ions of Na plus and Cl minus. We cannot see undissociated molecule of NaCl in that crystal. Okay, so it is simply suggesting us that strong electrolyte, even in its solid state, exists as ions, not undissociated molecular form. Okay, right. Here, if you look at this NaCl crystal structure figure the ions just remains in their position due to the presence of electrostatic interactions or forces between these ions of Na plus and Cl minus okay so due to the presence of electrostatic or columbic interactions between cation and anion here we can say Na plus and Cl minus ions the ions remain in their position and they are not free to move around them. That means the mobilities of ions not possible in the solid form of this strong electrolyte that is NaCl. Okay, but whenever this NaCl crystal is melted, that means if we observe molten NaCl, Na plus and Cl minus move far away from each other. That means there is the minimization of electrostatic interactions or electrostatic forces are minimized between Na plus and Cl minus ions. That means these ions are free to move around. Okay. The mobilities of ions increases in molten form of NaCl and that's why they contribute for uh, conduct, conductance. Okay, so next one. Here, the electrostatic forces vary inversely as the dielectric constant of the medium in which we have taken that particular electrolyte. Okay, that means here, if uh, if a medium has high dielectric constant, then the electrostatic forces between ions of particular electrolyte which we have taken in that medium or minimum and the mobilities of ions increases and they contribute for conductance. Okay, right. Now, here, if we take water, we know that water has high dielectric constant so when we take a strong electrolyte in water the strong electrolyte completely ionizes into its respective ions and the ions will uh, move freely in that water
water because we can see small electrostatic forces absorbed between those ions okay so due to the high mobilities of ions they conduct or they contribute for conductance okay right now just consider another solvent that is ethanol when we take ethanol we know that ethanol has small dielectric constant so whenever the medium has small electric constant and if we take the same strong electrolyte in ethanol the strong electrolyte ionizes completely just say a plus and b minus of that particular electrolyte but due to the small dielectric constant of medium strong electrostatic forces absorbed between those ions so ions are not free and they appear as ion pairs or ionic doublets that means the mobilities of uh, ions are less in ethanol when we compare with water and that just affect the conductance of that particular electrolyte okay right now uh, as we know from arrhenius theory of uh, electrolytes on dilution the molar conductance increases and that is just due to increase in degree of ionization of that particular electrolyte okay according to arrhenius theory on dilution molar conductance increases just due to increase in degree of ionization okay but it is not exactly correct for strong electrolytes now we need to look at another theory that is here just say modern theory of strong electrolyte okay so degree of ionization of strong electrolytes is unity at moderate concentrations here what modern theory of strong electrolyte just uh, saying as a degree of ionization of strong electrolyte or strong electrolytes is uniform throughout the different concentrations so we can simply uh, just reject this uh, explanation for that increasing in molar conductance on dilution according to arrhenius the increase uh, that means molar conductance increase on dilution just due to increase in degree of ionization but it is not correct because the by just changing the concentration there is no change in degree of ionization of strong electrolytes okay so that is just given by or suggested by modern theory of strong electrolytes i next one according to de beauvel theory increase in molar conductance just due to increase in the mobilities of ions of that particular electrolyte in that medium okay and at the same time decrease in molar conductance is just due to decrease in the mobilities of ions okay so here the increasing and decreasing of mobilities of ions just depends on inter ionic effects okay so inter ionic effects plays major role in deciding molar conductance of that particular electrolyte okay right now according to de beauvel theory inter ionic attraction okay inter ionic attraction but not partial dissociation is the cause of decrease of conductance with increase in concentration okay so by just increasing the concentration of that particular electrolyte in a medium uh, we can see decrease in conductance okay so according to arrhenius theory it is it is just uh, given explanation based on uh, that means uh, the partial dissociation is absorbed that's why the conductance decreases uh, by just increasing concentration but it is absolutely wrong and uh, according to de beauvel theory the decrease in conductance by just increasing concentration due to inter ionic attractions okay right now we need to understand ionic atmosphere to explain how the conductance decreases with increase in concentration okay right so ionic atmosphere how ionic atmosphere will form in a medium from that particular electrolyte which we have taken in it 
Okay, right. So whenever we take a strong electrolyte in your water, it completely ionizes into cations and it's uh, anions respectively. Okay, right. And we know that the cation and anions will have columbic interactions. Okay, that is electrostatic forces. And due to columbic interactions, we can see a well organized structure between cations and anions. So if we have a cation, the cation is surrounded by a group of anions by just uh, here columbic interactions and they will make a well organized structure and we can call it as ionic atmosphere and at the same time anion is surrounded by cations and it will make ionic atmosphere okay right so here asymmetric effect and electrophoretic effect and viscous effect so these are three very very important eff imp uh, important effects which just affects the ionic modalities of that particular electrolyte and affect the conductance of that particular electrolyte okay so we may ask the question uh, in various competitive examinations like how the con that means uh, the conductance decreases with increase in concentration just due to here asymmetric effect electrophoretic effect viscous effect and something so these three are the reasons for the decreasing of conductance with increase in concentration okay right now just look at asymmetric effect so how we can analyze asymmetric effect as we said due to the presence of columbic interactions between ions that means here cations and anions there is a formation of a well organized a group of uh, that means a group of structure so we can call it as ionic atmosphere right and whenever we apply electric field just take electric field then what happens cations automatically moves towards cathode okay cathode electrode and anions will move towards here anode okay right so whenever we apply electric field the central cation tries to move towards cathode okay so in that case what happens the anions are trying to move anode so the columbic interactions that means the cation should just uh, try to escape from the columbic interactions of uh, anionic interactions okay that's why the mobility of this central cation decreases okay so here whenever cation just try to moving towards cathode anions are just move, trying to move towards anode the well organized structure just simply distorted that means we can see asymmetry in that ionic atmosphere and due to that asymmetry the columbic interactions will just uh, apply on central cation and its mobility decreases that's why we can call it as asymmetric effect whenever the mobility of uh, mobility of ions decreases then conductance vary okay right so that is the reason and we can call that effect as asymmetric effect okay and next one electrophoretic effect here just look at uh, uh, electrophoretic effect so we know that the ionic atmosphere is existed in water right water molecules so whenever cation trying to move cathode trying towards moving uh, towards a cathode then it should just move against the water molecules okay that is central cation should just uh, should move from the counter currents of water that's why the that means the cation mobility decreases at the same time anion should move from the counter currents of water okay so that's why the mobility of ions decreases and we can simply call it as electrophoretic effect okay and third one here viscous effect so every medium has some viscosity and when we apply electric field and uh, here the ions should drag the viscous uh, effect 
okay drag from the viscous effect of that uh, medium in which we have taken that electrolyte so these three important effects uh, will just uh, uh, affect the ionic mobilities of electrolyte and it just uh, uh, vary that particular conductance of electrolyte okay right and next question next one here debye huckel and sagar equation which is very very important for competitive purpose we may get frequent questions from this debye huckel and sagar equation okay now we have taken for uni univalent electrolytes like kcl potassium chloride so it is the uh, debye huckel and sagar equation i have given the direct equation here so the molar conductance at uh, some concentration here the square root of concentration okay some at, at some concentration and here molar conductance at infinite dilution of zero uh, zero concentration okay right here epsilon or indicating dielectric constant okay and uh, here nita indicating viscosity of medium and capital t in the equation indicating absolute temperature and here uh, c capital c indicating concentration of the solution in moles per liter okay right now just look at the equation again here the first term in the right side of the equation in that bracket it is uh, due to electrophoretic effect okay and the second term indicating asymmetric effect just remember okay right now some of these two effects multiplied with square root of concentration gives the decreasing of molar conductance or that concentration from its limiting value that is molar conductance at infinite uh, infinite uh, dilution or at zero concentration okay right for a given solvent and at a given temperature the above equation is simply expressed as this just take this okay right here uh, a and b okay a and b or debye huckel constants and their values at 25 degrees centigrade here a value is 60.2 and b value 0.229 respectively okay just take it and here just uh, look at the equation again at 25 degree centigrade and if we take a flat between molar conductance uh, with respect to um, or versus uh, square root of concentration we should get a straight line okay a straight line uh, for that uni univalent strong electrolyte okay with a slope and here equation this equation is applicable for uni univalent electrolytes up to 0.02 molar concentration only if the concentration increases further from that 0.02 molar concentration then we can see a uh, deviations from that straight line okay so simply we can say that debye huckel ansager equation fails at high concentration okay right and uh, thank you very much and uh, if you're interested you can just visit chemmasters.online and uh, join for the best online courses to get guaranteed success uh, thank you very much